your energy forecast for Tuesday, July 23rd. So we have the moon in Aquarius energy going void, of course, at 5.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Pisces energy at 9.24 a.m. So, of course, the transition into Pisces energy, we're moving out of the ability to act as the observer with this emotional detachment that the moon in Aquarius provides us in order to see the greater, grander picture, in order to think outside of the box, in order to see where it is that we have to come up to creative solutions in order to free and liberate us from some of the confines, the restrictions, the limitations that we would have definitely been illuminated to through that moon in Capricorn energy. Of course, we had a full illumination of those particular power struggles with that full moon in Capricorn in particular. But moving into Pisces energy, now we're moving into all of the feels. The Pisces energy, again, being the last sign of the zodiac, it's time to wrap things up. We have to bring a sense of closure, a sense of completion to a topic, to a theme. Of course, the Pisces energy is very intuitive, very hypersensitive. We're, again, tapping into the subtle energies of the world, of the environment around us, while also tapping into the wounds within our own damn selves. We have to feel it in order to heal it. Now, lucky for us, we are fresh in Leo energy, which means that If this was happening in cancer season, we would have had water on water on water on water on water, which of course we are very happy and excited to get out of as of this particular moment because we're no longer kind of treading water out in the ocean of emotion. The Leo season is bringing the fire to this particular present moment, which of course is helping to A, dry us off from all of the emotion, B, put us in a situation to kind of burn through the cords of attachment with the past. C, put us a little bit more with a pep in our step because we're reigniting a passion, a fire, a flame, an excitement and inspiration for life. We are trying to bring the playful energies back. Of course, we're going to need a couple more days to truly adjust to this particular energy. If you haven't listened to the Leo season astro forecast as of yet or downloaded your e-guide, I'm going to recommend that you do both of those things. But with the sun now in his rulership in this Leo energy, shining a bright light on our lives, where it is that we have to be bold and brave and courageous to do new things in order to create a different result, the moon in Pisces energy going to align us with our higher self, going to download us with a vision, a goal, a dream that our soul, our spirit is now calling us to do, calling us to pursue. But at the same time, We also have a lot to unpack. We have a lot to cleanse. We have a lot to purify. We have a lot to let go of. And so once the moon is in Pisces energy, we're definitely going to be in a totally different realm where essentially we don't really want to deal with life at this present moment. We're kind of moving into imaginary land to conjure up a goal, a vision, a dream that we can actively start manifesting, actively start pursuing. With all of that being said, There are 11 different aspects popping off here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. Now we get the day kind of started under a particular heavy and intense influence. You may have felt this yesterday. Of course, it would be hard to kind of discern what it was that you were actually feeling because of course, we're still adjusting to Mars being a Gemini energy. We're still very much in the full moon Capricorn energy. And of course, the sun just shifted into Leo energy. We had a lot of movement. We had a lot of change. So we're still kind of, I'm going to say acclimating to this particular energy. It is hard to kind of pinpoint the influence, the energies that we are tapping into. However, the sun is opposing, sitting directly across from Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer. He's retrograde in Aquarius energy. The sun now in Leo energy, Leo and Aquarius, they sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. This is going to be intense. This is going to illuminate some darker thoughts, some darker narratives, some darker feelings. We have to kind of unearth those dark parts in order to bring a certain perspective, awareness, light to it, especially where unresolved matters are concerned. 
So of course, this could be our own personal feelings because we are going through a change and transformation of self. This could be relationship dynamics, especially where ones have popped off and in some cases have dissolved completely. This could just be the sudden events of the last couple of weeks where we were sitting in a sense of confusion. We're starting to gain a little bit more clear understanding, a clearer perspective of some of the inner workings that we weren't able to articulate at that time. We are going to be illuminated to some fear, to some doubt, to some insecurity. Why? Because we have to let go of something that we've been having a death grip on and we're not essentially too convinced at this point that letting go of this particular aspect, topic, or theme is going to be replaced by something better. We actually think that holding on to this dead weight, holding on to this dead horse is benefiting us in some way. This should be an aha moment on where it is that, again, you're holding on to dead weight, where it is that you yourself are the problem, where you're blocking the progress, where you have the ability to grow, to evolve, to move on, and you're choosing not to. Does it feel good? Absolutely not. Is it supposed to? 100% no. You need to be illuminated to where it is that the power struggle is alive and well within you. You're fighting yourself. You're fighting your old self. You're fighting your old dreams. It's time to come to a certain term of acceptance. It's time to realize where it is that holding on to the old is only preventing your progress and moving on and moving forward towards the new. And this essentially is up to you. How long do you want to continue to immerse yourself in something that was never meant to continue? So yes, there's a little bit of inner drama. There's a little bit of inner turmoil. We are really examining the circumstances of our lives. We are especially looking at the areas of our lives that we feel powerless over. This is about us understanding that we again, as human beings convince ourselves that we actually have power and control over our lives when realistically speaking, really the only thing we have power and control over is the way we react or respond to a lot of the circumstances that are taking place in our physical realms. So in order for us to actually tap into the higher self, tap into the creator abilities, tap into our power and control to manifest a physical realm that not only looks good, that feels good. You have to realize that your ego is holding on to old chapters, old karma, old people, places, and things. This particular illumination, because it's uncomfortable, because it is supposed to be uncomfortable, is going to illuminate for us where it is that we have to flip the script, where it is that we have to shift our perspective, and where it is that we have to come up with a better plan, a better strategy for how it is that we're going to close some of these doors and actually move on. The moon in Aquarius energy, then going to get into the boxing ring, fight it out with Uranus. Uranus rules over this Aquarius energy, so this is going to be a little bit intense as well. Uranus being the great awakener in Taurus energy, a square is illuminating where it is that we're struggling, going through the growing pains. Emotionally speaking, the moon in Aquarius does have us emotionally detached in order for us to see the greater, grander plan here. But the Uranian energy that usually brings in a little bit of clarity because of this square, we are essentially sitting in confusion. We're having a hard time seeing the forest past the trees. Why? Because our ego is hurt. That Sun and Pluto opposition is no joke. So instead of kind of focusing in on the silver linings, focusing in on the hints and clues from the cosmos on where it is that we have to make a major change in our physical realm, we're choosing to dwell on where it is that we're not seeing clarity, where it is that we know that there's endings that we just don't want to see actually end. And essentially, we again are part of the problem. The moon is then going to directly oppose and sit across from Mercury. Mercury rules over the mental plane, rules over information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Also in this Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, although he is slowing down the mental capacities, the intellectual processing, if you will, because he is in his pre-retrograde shadow period. The moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They're sitting across the table from each other, they're in a little bit of a conflict. Our heart feels something that our head is not aligning with or vice versa, whichever way you want to look at it. The moon in this Aquarius energy is very visionary, thinking about the future, thinking about where it is that we could be better, do better, improve on certain situations in our lives. And Mercury being in this Leo energy, our heart and head 
trying to get in alignment with this new idea, with this new vision, with this new goal, with this new dream. I feel like because the Leo energy is very much in the present and the the Aquarius energy is very much in the future, this is also contributing to this particular disconnect. 5.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to go void, of course. Things get shaky, things get uncertain, things get unstable while the moon is void. We do have one aspect popping off while the moon is void, and that is a positive interaction with Neptune, retrograde and the final critical karmic degree of his rulership here in Pisces energy. This is a little bit of a reminder that we have to be blending our intellect with our intuition, especially when we move into La La Land, we start conjuring up a new goal, new vision, a dream for our future selves. We have to recognize where it is that we can't think it to death. Yes, you have to apply planning and strategy and logic and rationale to some of the dreams that you're now having. But when you think it to death too much, you suck the magic out of it. You suck the calling out of it. You suck the excitement and the inspiration out of some of the downloads that we are now starting to kind of sort through and process and be able to fully understand. It is at this particular juncture at 9.24 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that the moon shifts into Pisces energy. We sit in that for approximately an hour before we have any aspects pop off. The moon in Pisces is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, who was retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So we're starting to see where it is now that we have the ability to close some doors on some heavy emotions, on some karmic chapters, on some loose ends, that Plutonian energy is here to boss us up. It's here to show us where it is that we've been feeling powerless because we've been beating a dead horse. The horse is dead. It's time to accept it. It's time to bury it. It's time to move on. It's time to pivot and look for new horses. Basically, we are in an empowerment energy here, getting a grip on our own damn selves, recognizing where it is that as if we want to see a different circumstance, a different energy, all we have to do is stop looking back and start looking forward. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with the sun, fresh in this Leo energy. And of course, anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an epiphany. We're going to realize new wants, new needs, new desires. Now, this is an uncomfortable situation. So the moon in Pisces, again, feeling all the feels, hella confused on where it is that we're supposed to go from here, overwhelmed to a certain extent, where we just want to kind of curl up in a ball and kind of wait this particular chapter out. The sun in Leo energy is trying to bring us back to life, trying to infuse us with happiness, with joy, with playful energy, with creative energy to come up with some solutions to where it is that we're closing the door, completing some chapters and where it is that we need to move on. Again, does it feel good? Absolutely not. It's not supposed to. It is supposed to highlight for us where it is that emotionally speaking we're at versus where it is that our ego selves, our avatar selves desire to be. That gap, that distance is going to be the growing pains that we are now realizing we have to go through, what we have to grow through in order to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Mars. Mars is the god of war. He rules over physical energy, drive, passion, desire, even anger. He's fresh in this Gemini energy. Go ahead, take a listen to the astro forecast for that particular astro shift if you haven't already. This particular energy, again, emotionally speaking, we are looking back, okay? The Pisces energy needs us to look back in order to bring something full circle, to bring a closure, a completion point to an emotional cycle, to a karmic chapter. Mars, on the other hand, he has ripped the rear view mirror off of the car. He has no want, need, or desire to look back. He is only focused on the paths, on the options, on the opportunities that he has to move forward. Again, he's in Gemini energy, so there is a little bit of the vision there, weighing the pros and cons of those different options, those different variables. Mars is frustrated because, of course, he just got free of this Taurus energy that, of course, put us in a bit of a stagnancy over the last month-ish. He's in this Gemini energy. He's pushing the mental plane to the absolute comfort zone in order for us to figure out what we want to do, what we want to to pursue where we want to go from here so emotionally speaking we're still looking back mars on the other hand looking forward here's the divide 
here is the tension, here is the conflict, we're trying to get on the same page, but the restlessness, the impatience that we're experiencing because Mars wants to move forward is definitely aggravating a lot of heavier emotions within us. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in this Leo energy. She is going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune retrograde at the final karmic degree in his rulership and Pisces energy. We love this. First of all, Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. Neptune connects us to our intuition, to our spiritual cycles, to our karma, to our soul contracts, to our imagination, to our creativity. Venus rules over the physical form that we actually have to bring this vision, this goal, this idea into our mental plane, sort it out logically and practically, drop it in our heart space, build an inspiration and an excitement and actually give birth to it. Actually do what you gotta do to bring it to life. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She is basically how we bring our dreams, our goals, our vision into this physical form. And so we love this interaction, first of all, because, you know, Venus in kind of interacting with the higher octave of the dreams of the creativity that we kind of need to be tapping into in order to figure out our new passions, our new desires. What we're getting here is, I'm going to say both a pro and a con. I'll say a pro because this puts us in a beautiful situation to kind of believe in whatever it is that we want to believe in, right? So we may be just, you know, sweeping some proof, some evidence, some facts, some data under the rug here. If it kind of, you know, paints an uglier picture than what it is that we prefer in actually looking upon at this particular point in time. We kind of, I'm going to say, miss the realistic points. We miss the details. We miss the, uh, I'm going to even going to say red flags to a certain extent of a certain situation of a certain circumstance. Now, is it good to be delusional? Well, you know, sometimes, sometimes the being delulu is the salulu in order to actually conjure up a goal, a vision, a dream that surpasses your physical circumstance. We have to have hopes and wishes and dreams in order to bust out of the here and now and set our sights on something more magical, more inspiring for us to actually be building towards. The con is is that we're choosing to be delusional. We're choosing to not see the facts. We're choosing not to see the red flags, which if you look back on your experience, you will know eventually come back to bite you in the ass. So first of all, we're going to be drawn to something new. We're going to be triggered and activated to really want to build and create to give birth to something new. However, the Neptune energy has a layer of fog, a layer of confusion. And that's why we at this particular juncture are just choosing what we want to see, choosing what we want to believe. I would say be very cautious that you're setting yourself up for disappointment in the days to come. Because again, we're choosing to ignore a lot of the facts, a lot of the data, a lot of the details that are very important that may kind of take the fun, the excitement, the inspiration, the magic out of our vision, but at least kind of puts us in a more informed situation to make decisions, to make some choices. The moon in Pisces energy, then going to make a positive interaction with the sun in Leo. So again, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an emotional awareness. And in this case, because it's a positive interaction, it's likely going to be a light bulb moment on what we're excited for, what we're inspired to do, what we want to build, what we want to create. Again, the moon in Pisces, very imaginative, very creative, very dreamy. The sun in his rulership and Leo energy shining a bright light on where it is that we have to be operating from our heart space, where it is that we have to be authentic within ourselves and actually be bold and brave enough to do the hard things which just happen to be the right things in order to break away from the old and actually start gaining a little bit of distance and proximity closer to the things that we want to build, we want to create, we want to be experiencing. The moon is then going to semi-square Chiron the wounded healer in this Aries energy. So this is kind of where, again, when we have a couple of really positive aspects that open up our mind and open up our heart and download us with a goal, a vision, a dream on where it is that we would like to go from here, the dark force programming kicks in and starts kind of speaking fears into all of the magical visions that we just got excited about. This has a lot to do with our identity though, because Chiron's involved, he is in Aries energy. This is the new version of self. And at this particular juncture, 
we're starting to realize what we actually have to do to break away from the old to pursue the new. We're starting to question at this point, do we have what it takes? Are we courageous enough to do what needs to be done? Again, we have to break ourselves down in order to build ourselves up in a much better way. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Pisces making a positive interaction with that North Node in Aries energy. So the North Node is trying to get us on the right path, show us that we need to go on a little bit of a more independent solo quest, solo adventure to know thyself, to know thy strength, to know thy wants, needs, and desires. The moon and the North Node working together puts us in a situation where, again, we're moving into la-la land, we're moving into imagination land, we're focusing in on the details of the goal, the vision, the dream, the reality that we actually want to be living. And of course, that gives us a little bit of clarity on some baby steps that we have available to us at this particular and present moment to move on, to move forward, to grow, to heal, to evolve. Now, granted, we're probably not going to take action upon those particular aha moments in this present moment, but this is about capturing the goal, the vision, the dream, infusing it with as much magic, as much excitement, as much inspiration as possible we have to build our inner fire our inner flame up in order to actually see the obstacles see the challenges see the blockages through